Hi there, how's it going? This is Cross the Rubicon the channel. A bit cooler today in North Canterbury. I'm going to talk about a very controversial subject in New Zealand, a subject that no one's allowed to talk about. And if you do talk about it, well, there's cries of racism all the time. That's the first thing that comes out. And they are specifically designed to shut anybody down who speaks the truth. Now, one is that Maori are indigenous to New Zealand. And it keeps getting pumped out every single day by radical extremist Maori, even normal Maori, because they believe it. Because, well, when you, when you hear a lie enough times, you tend to believe it. The media pumps it out, the government pumps it out. TV channels every night pumps it out. And that a treaty also was a partnership between Queen Victoria and the Maori chiefs. It was not a partnership. This has been made up. It's just, it's a lie, it's a scam. And the whole scam is, well, it's perpetrated by radical extremist Maori and self-loathing white people in government who I believe are on the take and they take, this is my theory, I believe they take money to support this. And uh, a whole lot of corruption has been going on for many, many, many decades. There were people before, here before Maori came here. They reckon there was three waves and Maori was the third wave. And the people that were here were basically genocided, especially the men. They were genocided and Maori took the women. The Maori were very, very aggressive when they came here. And the people that were already here were pretty placid. Good husbands, good hunters, but very poor warriors. And Maori, once they get the numbers, they massacred them. I think it was the Nati Mai Mai, I think they called them. Small in stature, tight, curly black hair, but not very good warriors. So that was the end of them. They were Tanata Fenua, the people of the earth. And Maori adopted their name, Tanata Fenua, people of the earth. And they called themselves indigenous and are not. Yes, the treaty was signed between the British and Maori chiefs. And even that is controversial. See, in 1840, February the 6th, Hobson, Captain Hobson, James Freeman, who was considered a complete ass, and he was Hobson's, I think, second in command of his ship when he came here. There was Busby, who was New Zealand resident when he came. He was already in New Zealand. And there was the Williams brothers, Henry Williams, they were missionaries. No relation. And their wives. Now the Williams brothers, especially Henry Williams and his son, they had been here so long that they learned to speak Maori. Maori didn't have a written language. And he, I think he was part and parcel of writing the Bible in Maori. Which is one hell of a task. And when William Hobson and Busby, with the help of Henry Williams, they wrote out the draft of the treaty in February, 1840. They wrote that a few times, got it right. And then Henry Williams translated it into Maori. Remember, there was no Maori language. So he wrote it the way it sounded, so Maori could understand it. And so you had the English draft and it was translated into the Treaty of Waitangi, which was the Maori version. That was done by Henry Williams. And that's the one that was signed. So the Maori version of the Waitangi Treaty was the one that was signed by the chiefs. And basically the treaty said as good as Maori have the rights and privileges of British citizens. That was it, as good as. The treaty stopped cannibalism, it stopped slavery, it stopped a perpetual state of warfare. 
the chiefs were happy to sign it because they needed peace between Maori because, well, Maori stayed in their little villages or wherever and they were terrified that another tribe, a stronger tribe, had come over the hill and slaughtered them and genocide them and cannibalise them. And that's the way they lived, a perpetual state of fear. So, <laughs> the treaty was signed and Hobson and Freeman, James Freeman, Hobson's number two, they went round the country getting other chiefs to sign. And it was North Island, mostly North Island. Getting other chiefs to sign this document that was written in Maori. So you had the English version, the draft, and that was translated into the Maori version. And the Maori version was the treaty. And it was a direct translation, okay, by Henry Williams, who spoke fluent Maori, just to make sure. Now on his travels, Hobson had a stroke and Freeman, James Freeman, decided to write his own version because they ran out of space on the paper, on the parchment. So he wrote his own version in English. And he wrote a completely different version, which gave Maori so much more right to fisheries, right to forestries, and blah, blah, blah. And this has caused all the confusion. No, it's not confusion. It's deliberate by Maori today. So Freeman really fucked this country up, basically. So Freeman went ahead while Hobson was ill. And he got more signatures on that document that he rewrote, which wasn't the treaty. So when the chiefs signed that particular document that Freeman rewrote out, because obviously he couldn't understand Maori, and that's why he thought he wrote what he thought it meant. <sighs> so now the Maori believe that document because it gives them all extras, much more extras. And it's causing all this trouble today. And Maori know this, but they say the Freeman document, that's the true treaty. And we're, and we're going by that one because it gives us all more gives us ownership of New Zealand partnership, blah, 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 when it wasn't. Now, the original draft of the treaty, the one that was written by Busby and Hobson, the Williams brothers, they wrote it, rewrote it, got it right. It went missing in 1840, and there was an American bloke, forget his name, but he, he was there too, and he gave it to his lawyer who lived in Auckland and the original draft. And that was found in the 1980s in a sideboard in Auckland. And it was given, and it was given to his lawyer. So in the 1980s, it was found in a sideboard. And the family that owned it were the Littlewood family. And that became the Littlewood Treaty, which was the original English draft. And it was exactly the same as the Maori version, only in English. This was the draft that the Maori version was copied from. And because it was an almost perfect copy, only a translated version, Maori wouldn't accept it, so they said it was a fraud. But it's been proven to be the truth. So the Littlewood Treaty is actually the truth. Maori experts say no because it doesn't give them what they want, which is half the country. Governments say no because they're in cahoots with radical extremist Maori. And um, yeah, it's messy. It's really messy. And in New Zealand, like I say, me making this video, it'll be considered as racist and white supremacist and all, all the other things they call me, call others, I say it as well. But I'm just giving you a bit of a rundown of what's happening here. And Maori now have got the, well, they've got the Hei Pu Pu document, which com comes down from the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, where Maori are not indigenous. So even the United Nations now recognise Maori as indigenous because two people have come here in the last 20 years to uh, racon rapporteurs, raconteurs, I think they called them, whatever, two people from the United Nations, two Americans. And um, one came under the Helen Clark government 
and she ignored him. And this fella spoke, uh, spent 10 days with radical extremist Mary up and down the country. And they just filled his head with all basically lies. He didn't want to know the New Zealand public, the rest of the New Zealand public, only radical extremist Mary. And he went back and uh, said, New Zealand government should hand everything back to Mary, basically. And a few years later, um, another one came, a different bloke again, under the John Key government. And John Key, the traitor, the traitorous John Key, welcomed him. And basically took on what this fella recommended, basically handing lock, stock and barrel over to marry radicals who were not indigenous to New Zealand. And uh, John Key in 2010, I think it was, let Peter Sharples fly off to the United Nations and a whole group of Maori, about 30 or 40 of them, to do the haka in the United Nations. And he let him sign up to the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. John Key did that. And I remember him on telly 12 years ago saying, oh, it's, it's nothing to worry about, don't worry about it. It's, it's just, it's nothing, no, don't worry about it. That's what John Key said. And now we've got the Hey Poo Poo document and Three Waters and Maori radicals, Maori extremists. They want everything. They want the rivers, they want the lakes, they want the water, they want the land. They want the land your house is on. They want New Zealand because they're saying they're indigenous. This is their land. Maori came here 800 years ago. 800 years ago. In the 13th century they came here. There's no doubt about this. That's what they say in their own history. But now they've been allowed to rewrite their own history. In the UK, the Welsh, the Cornish, are the originals of the UK. It was them that were there when the Romans came. They were the, they're the, the last remnants of Wales and Cornwall. They're the last remnants of what was there when the Romans came 2000 years ago. Okay, and the Picts of Scotland, the Picts, not the Scots as such, but definitely the Picts, they were the originals up there. These people, the Welsh, the Cornish, the Picts of Scotland, where Scotland is today, these people have been there since the last ice age, maybe even before the last ice age, and yet they're not considered indigenous. So how do Maori get this indigenous title? Go figure. New Zealand is in a pickle. And, you know, people who say what I'm saying now, and there's, there's much more well-educated people than me, and, you know, that's not hard to find, to be honest. And, you know, university lecturers who say this kind of thing, but they've been destroyed. We can't allow, we can't allow Maori to destroy people's lives and the government and the media to destroy people's lives for having an opinion or I'll say for telling the truth of what has really happened in this country but that's what they are doing they are absolutely destroying people's lives and there's not one single full-blooded Maori today not one single full-blooded Maori there's there's probably not even one there's not there's probably not even a half Maori left today they are all diluted all the vast majority of them are mostly mostly European British Irish that's what they are but you can have you know one part in a thousand Maori and you consider Maori would you believe that one, one part in over a thousand, actually. And, you'll, and the other parts, all British or Irish or Dutch or German, whatever, mostly British and Irish. And you consider Mary? People that look whiter than me with ginger hair, get, ginger hair, get, get the muckies and get tattoos on their face to prove their credentials. It's a gravy train and it's ripping this country apart. It's worth billions, billions upon billions upon billions. Unbelievable riches to radical extremist Maori. That's what it's worth. And we're all going to pay, all of us are going to pay. And most New Zealanders refuse to even talk about it. 
they say, oh no, it's, it's not going to happen. The government won't do this to us. But I really have Wheaty Whiteys. He wouldn't do this. They wouldn't get away with it. Debbie Packer. What's his name? Willie Jackson. They, they can't do this. They wouldn't get away with it. They are getting away with it. They are getting away with it. And you're paying for it. You will always pay for it. Your children and your grandchildren are always going to pay for this. <sighs> anyway. I thought I felt the need to make that video because you know me now, I'll say it as it is. And it needs to be said, it needs to be said by many more politicians need to say what I'm saying. Stand up in Parliament and say it. Take on Mary, take on these radical extremists in Parliament, take them on full frontal. Don't be in fear of them, just take them on. And call them out as liars, cheats, fabricators, scammers and troughers, because that's what they are. I would, not a problem. I'd take them on head on. But that's why they don't want me anywhere near a camera or the media. They won't interview me, the media, at all. They slide me off, but they won't interview me. Politicians just say, oh, he's just a far right white, white supremacist. That's all, I, that's all they've got because they won't talk about the real facts of New Zealand. Okay, this is Across the Rubicon. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, share this video everywhere. If you want to buy me a beer or a coffee or a three bedroom house overlooking the ocean somewhere, preferably in New Zealand or maybe Queensland, feel free. Okay, this is Across the Rubicon. See you later.